Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Will Trent with the. Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Will Trent with the Filmmakers Code, and today we're talking about how to shoot on these beautiful red cameras. Yes, so we just had a shoot, and we had the red out here, so I thought this was the perfect time to actually do a tutorial on this. So, before we talk about shooting on a red camera, let's talk about why you want to shoot on these things. We shoot all of our narrative short films on red cameras because of just general image quality. Red cameras have beautiful quality, obviously. In terms of just post-production workflow, uh, the color space is beautiful. It does shoot raw, and the files are surprisingly easy to work with, so I, that's what it is. Red Code Raw is definitely probably my favorite workflow to work in, so. Yeah, that's why we shoot on red cameras. Let's get into this right now. This is in particular the Red Raven, uh, but the way to use the Red Raven is the same across all DMSC2 bodies. Uh, the DMSC3 bodies, like the Red Komodo and the Red Raptor Vista Vision, uh, that one, we'll have a tutorial on that eventually, but for right now, we're working on these. Again, all DMSC2 bodies will be the exact same how to use, from the Red Dragon, to Red Gemini, all that good stuff. So now you're probably wondering, like whenever you're renting out your reds, uh, what is the minimum that you need in order for you to be able to shoot on one of these things? So at minimum, you need to have a lens. Other DMSC2 bodies don't have a mount, so you're gonna have to get a lens mount. What are they cheering for out there? The Red Raven has a built-in EF mount, which is perfect for us because we are thousands of dollars into Canon glass, so it's perfect. And then you need a battery right here. It's a third-party battery, a screen, and the mag, which is the media, goes right there. Now, if you're renting from rental houses, our rental house has this kit already built out for us, X minus the lens, we own our lenses again. So the kit already came with basically everything you see here besides the lens. But again, all you really need is a lens, a lens mount if needed, a battery, the media or the red mags, and the screen. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this camera down to its bare bones so we can talk about how to put one together. Okay, so this is what the camera looks like whenever it's completely broken down. You can see that the sensor is red, which is why the camera is called a red camera. Really cool stuff. The first thing I'm gonna do is put the lens onto the camera so I don't expose the sensor for too long. So very simple, just like any other camera. Slide it on there, twist. The other thing about red cameras is that you can tighten down the lens by twisting this ring right here. This is just something that all DMSC2 bodies do. You put the lens on and then you tighten it down right here. Don't forget to do that. Next thing we gotta do is the battery. So we're using a V-mount battery. Red does make batteries and um, they vary in their sizes. Red cameras eat batteries like crazy. They, it's, they, the battery life on red cameras is horrible, honestly. They only survive about maybe an hour, an hour and a half maybe, depending on the amount of use that you're doing. So again, just be mindful of that. So I gotta do is put the camera onto there, V-mount battery, V-lock, bam, battery's installed. Next thing we gotta do is take the screen. This screen is $1,200, crazy, right? Good old red, that's red for you. So we're just gonna stick it up on the top right here, match it up with these pins. So now that we have the screen on here, the camera is now technically ready to shoot. You can turn it on, ready to go, but I'm gonna add a couple extra accessories uh, because, you know, I like accessories. So right here we have a side handle. So I'm gonna screw it on right here. And now this is a top handle, again, third party top handle by Small Rig, I believe, yep. All right. So now we have the top handle on there. And the last thing, I forgot to tell you, the, the mag itself. So put it in right on the side over here. And now this is the general setup that we use. This is what we always shoot on. We put this onto the dollies. We go handheld with this. We go on Steadicam with this. So right here we have our ports. Uh, very simple and straightforward. The Raven actually comes with these ports, believe it or not, um, on more expensive reds. Uh, I guess reds velocity is the more that you spend, the less money, or the less you should get. So that's crazy. So that, but essentially that means you would have to get the module that actually attaches to the back of the brain. You got your microphone jack, headphone jack, really easy stuff. You have a USB. You have controllers right here. You have an HDMI for, for you know showing yourself on a different screen. You know the smart thing to do would use to use HD SDI because you can actually see all your settings and stuff like that instead of just video output on a different screen. And this is DC power, so basically you use this to plug your camera into the wall. So what we do since these camera since these batteries or just the batteries in general, no matter what battery you use, the reds just eat them alive. What we always do is that whenever we call cut, we always move the red over to another station and we just plug it into DC power. So that way um, we're not wasting our battery, just, you know, 
just sitting around and we don't have to keep turning the camera on and off because of course it takes a very long time to turn on. I took off the top and the side handles. So now to turn on the camera, we're gonna hold this side button, which also doubles as a power button for a couple seconds until you hear the fans turn on. You ready? That's it. Now, the other thing about RED cameras is that they take a very long time to turn on, which is why I don't like using the REDs for uh, run and gun shoots. We only shoot on RED whenever we're shooting narrative film, whenever we're on a set and, uh, you know, there's time in between our takes and we have time to actually turn it on. There we go. It's starting to turn on. It's hitting initializing. That took about... I don't know, maybe 30 seconds right there. I'm, I can't I'm, I can't count, but definitely not as fast as a mirrorless or a DSLR. But now let's hop into the settings. So here we are on the red interface and we're focused right here on the Supreme logo. And before I start anything, just don't be scared. A red is just another camera to work with. It's a lot more straightforward than you think. There's just a couple of extra things here and there. So now there are usually a couple settings that I change coming from a factory reset red. So we're gonna go to Menu in the top right. We're gonna go to overlays, status. I usually change the shutter angle to shutter speed, even though objectively shutter angle is better. I'm just used to shutter speed, much like probably a lot of you are. Then I'm gonna change the uh, power to time remaining so I know the exact amount of time that is left on these batteries. Again, battery life on reds is horrible. And then usually, I, and I also change media from percentage to time remaining, so I know the exact amount of time that is left on the card. All the basic things you need to understand are at the top here. Top left is your frame, right? Uh, right here is your ISO. Right here is your aperture. Right here is your shutter speed. Right here is your temperatures. Right here is your resolution. And right here, this is the only thing you guys are probably not familiar with coming from a DSLR. This is compression ratio. So compression ratio, uh, basically what it is, I'm going to massively oversimplify this because this camera shoots raw. Raw files are typically really big. Red has implemented the compression ratio system. Out of all cameras that have a compression system like this, I think Red has definitely done the best. Basically the custom, custom, what's the word? Customizability? The customization, because of the customization of your compression ratio. So compression ratio, uh, let's think of it like this. As you can see, it's in a ratio like this from 12 to one or maybe something like 10 to one. If, say if we're on 10 to one, we're averaging 10 pixels into one pixel. The color information in 10 pixels averaged into one pixel. Hopefully that's making sense. Now, what compression ratio do you shoot at? This is really entirely up to you. Um, I know that Pirates of the Caribbean shot at 10 to one. And honestly, I don't think there's a reason to go any, for any lower than that. Uh, we typically shoot on 12 to one. That's just what most of the films that we shoot on, we shoot on around 12 to one. Say if we go all the way down to really low compression, like three to one, you can see we have 14 minutes left on this mag. Um, and then if we go all the way to really high compression, like 22 to one, we have an hour and 44 minutes left on those cards. So, so again, 12 to one is usually what we shoot in for most of our projects. The next thing I usually change as well on, on reds is I go into menu, overlays, tools, and on this right here, false color, I always turn on focus assist, as you can see right here. It's because these, these monitors, for $1,100 monitors, they are absolutely horrible. Even the really big ones, the seven inch, this is the five inch monitor, uh, but even on the seven inch monitors, they're just, they're just really bad. I don't know why they charge that much for a monitor that you can barely see anything on. So obviously they're probably getting better as time goes by because you know we have the red Raptor and the red, uh, Komodo. The DMSC2 bodies, I just like them better. They seem more rustic. Now, if you want to play back some of the footage that you shot, let's say this, so we can start rolling right here. And then I want to pull some focus. See, I can't really tell that that Apple label is in focus, but then if I pull my focus right there with focus assist, um, it really highlights that Apple logo right there. Now, if you want to view the clips, just take a look right here on the bottom left, hit the camera right here. And there you go. It will take a minute, but it loads up. And then you can scroll through just by putting your finger anywhere. You, the cool thing is you can also turn off focus assist by going to menu, overlays, and uh, tools. And then turn off focus right here. And then you can just view the footage as is. Now the coolest thing about red footage is that because it's a red raw file, you can change your settings after you shot it. So I can actually view this image right here. I click on ISO and I can change the ISO, you know, after I've shot it. I can also even change the uh, color temperature. 
really crazy stuff. That's one of the best things about better cameras, as you can say, as I said in the other video, better cameras offer you more flexibility. You can also change these settings in Premiere Pro, which is really cool. We'll show you how to do that in the post-production section. Now, if you wanna view all of your clips, just click on this little waffle Rubik's Cube looking thing and then all your clips will pop up there. You can select a clip and then hit load and then comes up like so. These things down here, you don't really have to, um, you don't have to really pay attention to too much. Um, there's these little green numbers right here. Um, all you, that's just telling you your temperature of the camera. Uh, if it's green or yellow, you're doing good. If it gets orange or red, time to turn off the camera, let it rest for a little bit. If you wanna format your cards, um, you're gonna tap on right here where it says SSSD on the time remaining. And then you see format media and then format will erase one clip and then you can format your card that way. If you want to eject your card, uh, click on SSSD again and hit eject media up at the top or just turn off the camera and then you can take out the mag. Now let's talk more about these settings right here. You should understand your settings really well. Uh, but there's some really cool things right here. Say if we want to shoot in 60 frames a second for slow motion, uh, you can actually Right here it says project time base 23.998. That basically means that it's not going to play back in 60 frames a second. It's going to play back in the frame rate that you set right here. So in this case, if I'm shooting in 60 frames a second and I put the project time base of 23.98 or 24 frames a second, the file will play back in 24 frames a second. Really cool. The only problem with that is if uh, you're not gonna be able to record audio. So let's keep that in mind. Usually when we shoot slow, when we shoot slow motion, we're not uh, recording any audio. So we just fully all of that in post. We also have your color temperatures. You can have advanced right here. You can have tint. So red cameras are usually leaning more on the green side. So I always add like a negative, hey, let's see, negative five tint right here, just so it's a little bit more magenta to counteract the green that red cameras tend to do. Obviously you can fix that in post, but it doesn't really matter. Now the cooler thing is as well, you have this button right here that says edit list. And then you can hit custom. And then you can basically just select whichever ones that you want to see so you don't have to keep scrolling through so many numbers. So that way I'm not gonna have to scroll through by increments of 100, I can scroll through increments of about like 300 on my color temperature. Right down here you have your histogram, simple stuff right here. Uh, you have your audio channels right here. The red does have internal audio, but it is horrible audio, so. I guess it's good if you're trying to um, get some scratch audio to work off of, but I would never suggest using uh, in built-in cameras, in-camera mics on any camera, obviously. So you should be booming or be labbed up like this. Honestly, that's all you really need to know about a RED. There are a lot of other things about the RED that I don't even know, uh, but that's all you really need to know in order to get started and actually shooting on this thing. And of course, just simply watching this video is not going to get you anywhere. So. Uh, go out, rent, rent the RED, start shooting your films, and, uh, and actually using the RED camera is what's gonna get you experience, of course. So don't be scared, obviously, it's just another camera, okay? So, I hope you guys got something useful out of this video. If you have any more questions about the RED camera, please let me know. And remember, everybody, your work is only just as good as the fun that you had creating it. My name is Will Tran, and I'll see you in the next video.